Listen, this morning we are continuing in our series on Ephesians. We have titled this series, Ephesians, Our Life in Christ. And today uh, I will kick off a three-part mini-series um, that I've simply entitled Family Matters. Family Matters. And today we're going to jump into part one of this three-part series. So with that, if you have a Bible, I invite you to turn with me to the book of Ephesians, chapter 5. Ephesians, chapter 5. And I'll read in your hearing, and you can follow along in verses 24 through 20, 22, rather, through 24, and verse 33, the B clause of verse 33. I'll be reading from the... English Standard Version of the Bible. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Get to verse 33. The B clause, the last clause. And let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is God's word. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for uh, this beautiful day that you've allowed us to see. We are grateful uh, for you blessing us to wake up this morning. And to come to this place as your church to worship you in spirit and in truth. So Father, as we continue in our worship this morning, we pray that you will ready ourselves, ready our hearts to receive your word. We ask, Father, that you will forgive us of any sin that we have committed against you. That you will rem remove all moral filth and filthiness and rampant wickedness from our lives. And God, we know that we are only able to receive divine truth by way of your Spirit's divine enlightenment. And so we pray that by your Spirit you will open our eyes that we might see wonderful things in your law. And we pray, Father, we will behold you at the end of all things and that you will cause the growth that you so desire in our lives. We pray this in faith, in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I want to title today's message, The Role of a Christian Wife. The Role of a Christian Wife of a Christian wife. It was said by Mike Myers that marriage can be viewed as the waiting room for death. <laughs> An unknown author said this about his own marriage. I used to be married, but I'm better now. <laughs> the truth of the matter is that there are many people that feel that way about marriage. That marriage is a ball and chain. You can kiss your life goodbye <laughs> once you say, I do. But I don't think that that is God's intent for marriage. I honestly believe by studying scripture and by knowing the character of God revealed to us in scripture that God is for our joy in marriage in him. That happiness and harmony is a byproduct and can be a result 
of a marriage that is both holy yeah. and humble. Mm -hmm. Yes. So don't get that mixed up. Don't miss that. Yeah. The ingredients for a happy and harmonious marriage is holiness before God and humbleness before God. But not just humbleness before God, it is humbleness before God also as it relates to how he desires for us to relate to one another. And so I want to jump into this message and say that in order for us to experience happiness and holiness or happiness and harmony, that we each have a role to play, both Christian husbands and Christian wives. And today's message is going to be for you sisters who are or desire to be Christian wives. Now, much will be said later in this mini-series to husbands. I don't, I don't want you to get <laughs> uneasy. But this message today is not for husbands. This message today is for you as a Christian woman who is married or who desires to be married. Now, if you are single and you are content in your singleness and you feel like you have a calling, a great calling from God to remain single for the rest of your, of your life, you still need to hear this message. Because there are persons that God may desire for you to be able to minister to, to help disciple, to help them grow in their understanding of marriage. It could be a nephew. It could be a niece in the case of women. It could be a cousin. It could be an aunt. It could be someone. So please don't tune this out. When you talk about marriage, the S word comes to mind. The word is submission. That word causes <laughs> many women's eyes to begin to twitch <laughs> and begin to roll in a sense of disgust and contempt. But unfortunately, the reason that is the case is because in the minds of some, submission is like that she's your queen to be seen from coming to America. <laughs> if you all don't know what that clip, the clip that I'm referring to, I want you to take a look at this. So, ever since I was born, I've been trained to serve you. Yes, I know this, but I would like to know about you. What do you like to do? Whatever you like. <laughs> what kind of music do you like? Whatever kind of music you like. I know what I like, and I know you know what I like because you were trained to know what I like, but I would like to know what you like. For instance, do you have a favorite food? Yeah. Good. What is your favorite food? Whatever food you like. Are you saying that no matter what I tell you to do, you will do? Yes, Your Highness. Anything I say you do? Yes, Your Highness. Bark like a dog. A big dog. Humble one leg. Make a noise like an orangutan. I see the two of you are getting along. Excuse me, my dear fellow. Fine girl, isn't she? That, brothers and sisters, is not biblical submission. <laughs> The Greek term for submission, hupotasso, 
is often used <clears throat> in a military context to communicate that a soldier of a lower rank was to line up under or fall in order under a higher ranking officer. So submission means to line up under or to yield yourself to the authority of another. To submit to the authority of someone else, hear this, does not diminish your worth as an individual. It doesn't make you less than the person whom you are submitting to. It doesn't mean you are incapable of leading. It doesn't mean you are to robotically and blindly follow another person. It doesn't mean you are never to weigh in on matters that fall within the sphere of life or work. And it doesn't mean you are to never take initiative or lead in some capacity or in ways while under the leadership of someone else. Biblical submission is about recognizing and falling in line with God's established order of authority. It takes nothing away from you as an individual. It has nothing to do with your ability or capability. It has everything to do with God's established order. If you're not convinced, let me direct you to consider that there is an order of authority that is both established by and observed among the Trinity. When you consider the Godhead, when you consider the Trinity, all three of its members, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, are all equal in essence, power, and ability. Each person of the Trinity is fully God. None of them are inferior to the other. And yet within the Trinity, there are functional role differences. God the Spirit is functionally submissive to God the Son and God the Father. And God the Son is functionally submissive to God the Father. Mm -hmm. You don't only have to see the Trinity, but you also see this truth in and through Jesus' life here on earth. When Jesus was here, he set the example for us of what it means to be in submission. Even at a young age of 12, junior high age, Jesus had a firm grasp on who he was and what he was to be about. Do you recall this in the scriptures that Jesus was traveling with his parents to Jerusalem? And while they're in Jerusalem, while they were observing you know, religious feasts, Jesus was in the temple and actually stayed behind when his parents and the caravan headed back to their home. After three days, Joseph and Mary realized, wait a minute, little Jesus is missing. They head back to Jerusalem, and there they find Jesus in the temple asking questions of the scholars of the day, religious scholars of the day. And people were astounded at his understanding and at his knowledge. And when Jesus was approached by his parents, Jesus' response was, did you not know that I would be about my father's business or in my father's house? Jesus, I tell you, had a firm grasp at the young age of 12 as to who he was and what he was to be about. And yet, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 2, verse 31, that Jesus joined his parents, went back with them to Nazareth, and the text says he was submissive to them. If submission to human authority was not beneath Jesus, then it shouldn't be beneath those of us who believe in and follow Jesus as well. 
If submission is beneath you, it is an indication that pride is within you. With this understanding of biblical submission, we quickly begin to realize that the act of submission is not solely assigned to a select group of Christians. Submission is an expectation of the Christian life. Believers are commanded, for example, to submit to God. Right. All believers. James chapter 4, verse 7 says, submit yourselves, therefore, to God. <laughs> believers are commanded to submit ourselves to pastors and leaders. In Hebrews chapter 13, verse 17, the A clause says, obey your leaders and submit to them. For they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will give an account. And as Christians, we are all supposed to submit to governing authorities. In Romans chapter 13, verse 1, Paul declares, Let every person be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been instituted by God. Let me say it again. Submission is an expectation of the Christian life. But also, submission is a result of the spirit-filled life. Yeah, right. This is the context of Ephesians chapter 5. If you remember our sermon two Sundays ago, that to be filled with the spirit results in, verse 21, us submitting one to another. As brothers and sisters in Christ, when we are filled or controlled by the Spirit, we will be in submission to one another. Mm -hmm. This continual filling of the Spirit is needed if mutual submission is to be evident in the church. Good. The continual filling of the Spirit is needed if marital submission is to be evident in the home. Yeah. You and I cannot submit in and of ourselves. Right, right. <laughs> it, ever since the fall, yeah, yeah, yeah. it is not natural, right. hear me, <laughs> in our fallen nature for us to submit. Y'all come on. <laughs> Some of y'all got children. <laughs> Let me ask you just a quick question. Did you ever have to teach your child to not be submissive to you. No. You didn't sit your baby down and say, this is what it looks like for you to be unsubmissive to me. Why? Why did you not have to teach it? Because it was already in them because they have a fallen nature just like you and I. So we need to be redeemed by Jesus and therefore to receive his spirit and we need the empowering work of the spirit to work in our lives both in the church so that we can mutually submit to one another but also in marriage so that submission can be experienced there in the home. Though men and women are created equal in essence by God, in marriage specifically, Husbands and wives have different roles to fulfill in relationship to one another. And in our passage for today, Paul addresses wives first. According to verse 22, which is an application of verse 21, the fundamental role as a Christian wife, this is the main point of the message, <laughs> the fundamental role that God has for you is right there in verse 21. Submit to your own husbands. Well, you know who Paul directs his spirit-inspired words to? Yeah. Wives. Submission in marriage is the sacred responsibility of Christian wives to fulfill, not for their husbands to enforce. Let me rewind it so make sure you get it. Mm -hmm. Submission in marriage is not, or is rather, the sacred responsibility of Christian wives to fulfill, 
not for their husbands to enforce. Any attempt to manipulate, brothers hear this, any attempt to manipulate, threaten, or coerce our wives into submitting to our leadership is a sinful offense against them and God and an insidious abuse of our headship as husbands. Any attempt to manipulate, threaten, or coerce our wives to submit to us is a sinful offense against them and God and is an insidious abuse of our headship as husbands. God directed wives to do this. He didn't direct husbands to make your wife do this. <laughs> the directive to submit is to be carried out, watch this, voluntarily by all Christian wives in prayerful dependence on the Holy Spirit. This is what is called a middle voice in Greek. It basically means that the, the subject, you are to take the action upon yourself. You are to be the one to carry out the action. This is one of the most empowering verses in the Bible for Christian wives. This is why I don't buy into the, the normal or the cultural understanding of submission as, to, as being this unempowering aspect of marriage because God didn't tell husbands to do this God directed you to do it and he gave the, you the spirit in Christ to be able to carry out what he has given to you it is to be voluntarily entered into you are to voluntarily willingly joyfully do this as a Christian wife let me pause here and give a bit of godly counsel to my single sisters that are here. Mm -hmm. Do not Amen. enter into marriage with a man who exhibits controlling behavior towards you or any other adult. Mm -hmm. That is a huge red flag you should not ignore. Mm -hmm. I hope you see where I'm getting this because yeah. God calls it sin and he throws a flag on the play for any husband who tries to make his wife submit. All right. So if you see a man that is exhibiting controlling behavior while you are dating, mm -hmm. it is quite honestly and may I say it lovingly foolish of you yeah. to think that that's going to change yeah. when you get married. If you see a man that exhibits that kind of characteristics, run. <laughs> so women, God expects you to willingly, watch the text, to submit to your own husband. You see it, verse 22? Mm -hmm. Submit to your own husbands, yeah. not to your boyfriend, yeah. <laughs> your boo, <laughs> your work play husband, or your sugar daddy. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Submit to your own husband. Additionally, when you are married, sisters, Submission to your husband needs to take precedence over submission to your father or mother yeah. Yeah, or yeah. any other member of your family. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah. That's good. You've heard of the concept of a person being a third wheel on a date? Mm -hmm. You heard that concept? Mm -hmm. A third wheel is basically a person who uh, accompanies a friend on a date but is clearly not the center of that friend's attention, affection, or agenda. Uh -huh. Your husband, Christian wife, should not be treated by you like he is a third wheel to you All right. when it comes to your family. All right. That's good. And 
I need to speak honestly. In love to you, my sister, when, when you are around your family and are dealing with matters related to your family that will impact your marriage or your family life with your husband and kids, if you have them, if your husband's authority is not acknowledged or, or is belittled by you, if his advice is not sought or taken seriously by you, if his feelings <clears throat> are not considered or are minimized by you, you are in the wrong. All right. Did you get that? Yeah. When you are around your family or when you are dealing with matters related to your family and if your husband's authority is not acknowledged or is belittled by you, if his advice is not sought or taken seriously by you, and if his feelings are not considered or are minimized by you, you are in the wrong. God's desire for you, Christian wives, is to yield to your husband's authority and influence above anyone else who is related to you. Wives, submit to your own husband. Paul continues in verse 22 to say, as to the Lord, yeah. to submit to your husband is an expression of your submission to Jesus. In submitting to your husband, you are submitting to the Lord. You get it? Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Um, why, Paul, why should you as a Christian wife submit to your husband? He gives the answer to that question in <coughs> verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its Savior. God has made your husband head over you. Verse 23. Don't, don't look at me. Look at the text. Right. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, his body, and is himself its savior. Your husband's positional status as head is and was activated when you all got married. All right. And it remains as such throughout the life of your marriage. Your husband is your leader, but only Jesus is your Lord. All right. <laughs> but listen, as your Lord, Jesus commands that you submit to your husband because he is your head. Right. And some married sisters will say to this, and I've heard it, well, I'll gladly submit to my husband when he starts to love me like he's supposed to. I'll gladly submit, Pastor, to my husband when he begins to lead like a good one. Or when he gets saved. Or when he starts to make more money than me. Or when fill in the blank. Will you notice that God doesn't allow for or acknowledge such preconditions or qualifications as the basis for your submission. All right. Headship was conferred, hear this, was conferred onto your husband at the moment you two entered holy matrimony. Y'all following? When you said I do, that man became your head, warts and all. This is the reason, single sister, you need to be prayerful and careful about who you get married to. Oh my God. This might not be for you, but this may be for your daughter, your, your cousin, your best friend, somebody in, in your life, this is the reason why you need to be careful and prayerful about who you get married to. You, hear me, single sister, 
You are not only choosing your mate, your partner, and your lover. You are choosing your head. You end up with him because you chose him. So you need to be prayerful. You need to be careful. You need to get godly counsel. You need to let other people vet this brother. <laughs> but that's the beauty of singleness, and that's the beauty of why we need to train our girls. For those that will be married to say, listen, you 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 need, you can you choose your head. Yeah. yeah. When you get you can you can choose. That's what, don't 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 rush yeah. <laughs> into getting married. Oh, Take your time. Don't be trying to be grown mm -hmm. so soon. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't no reason for you to rush into marriage. You 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 and you don't need to overly delay marriage, but take your time and do your due diligence. Because you're not you choosing just your partner, your lover, and your spouse. You are choosing your head. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. I read a blog this morning of a wife who was recounting the ways her husband saved her life. She writes, he saved me from the path I was on, the one that led to self-destructive behaviors, the one that lacked faith in God, the one that would have left me still seeking Happiness, happiness, the path that led to nowhere. She says, I was lost, so lost, and then I met him. Hmm. My husband saved my life. Hmm. Now, I get what she's trying to say. Mm -hmm. that, that, you know, in her mind, she didn't say it this way, but I, I hope she meant it this way, is that her husband was instrumental in God, you know, causing her to come out from a particular lifestyle. But let me be unmistakably clear here. According to verse 23, your husband is your leader, but only Jesus is your Savior. Now, now God, God can use your husband in some ways to be influential in your life, but there's only one person who can forgive you of your sins, uh -huh. make you right uh -huh. before God, right. and give you eternal and new life. Right. Right. And his name ain't Barry, his name ain't Ed, his name ain't Danny, his name ain't Jerry, his name ain't Ira, his name ain't whoever, his name, say it, Jesus. is Jesus. Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> his name is Jesus. So hear this, prioritize but never idolize mm -hmm. your husband. Prioritize, but never idolize your husband. You've got one Lord and Savior, Amen. and he ain't him. <laughs> one more point here. A wife's submission to her husband needs to be like that of, of the church's submission to Jesus. Paul says here, verse 24, Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. Mm -hmm. So how does that look then? How, how does submission to your husband look? First, it is to be ex exclusive. That is to say that in relationship to your husband, you, you are to submit to him alone. In marriage, you are to submit exclusively to your husband. But not only does it mean that we need to submit, or you need to submit ex exclusively as a Christian wife, it, need, it means you need to submit extensively. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 24. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. In 
every area of your life together as a couple. You are to submit to your husband. I, I remember this young couple that came to me, and they were uh, engaged and about to be married, and I was doing premarital counseling uh, with them. As we sat there uh, in my office uh, at the church where I used to work, they sat across from me, and I opened up the Bible and turned to Ephesians chapter 5, and I read that verse that we just read together. I read it, and I said, Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit in everything to their husbands. And in saying that, I added a caveat. And I said that the wife should submit in everything to her husband so long as that husband does not lead her into sin. That submission is to be exclusive, it is to be extensive, but it is not to be absolute. Mm -hmm. He disagreed with me. <laughs> stating that even if the husband leads his wife into sin, she is to follow him, knowing that God will not hold her accountable for her actions. And to that, I told him, that is wrong, my brother. And I gave him examples. I won't go through them all here, but you can look at even the case, and this is not necessarily in the context of marriage, but the principle is there. You can look at the case of when the midwives were told by Pharaoh, you remember this? Mm -hmm. That they were to kill mm -hmm. every male boy. Mm -hmm. And the midwives did not submit mm -hmm. to that because to submit to that was to break God's mm -hmm. commandment. It was to sin mm -hmm. against God. Mm -hmm. Here's another case of example in terms of the principle. That there are cases in which we ought not to submit to God-ordained authority when that authority goes clearly against the commandments of Scripture. Amen. Do you remember the three yes. Hebrew boys? Yes. Yes. Do you remember Daniel? Do you remember why he was thrown into the lion's den? Do you remember why they were, they were thrown into that fiery furnace? Because Nebuchadnezzar had built an idol of himself and he gave the command that they were to bow down to it and Daniel the three Hebrew boys refused yes. to do so. Mm -hmm. That Daniel was not to pray to his God and he refused to do so because to do so was to sin against their God. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then in Acts with Peter when they were threatened and told not to preach about Jesus and not to preach in his name, Peter says to them, Listen, I must obey God rather than man. So I want to tell you that submission, yes, in everything, but in those cases in which your husband may lead you or try to lead you into sin, you have an obligation to your Lord to not do so. Brothers, the Lord's authority always will overrule ours. And if we clearly are leading our wives into sin, you ought not to get upset. I ought not to get upset when they refuse to do so. So in summary, we're done. Paul, in verse 33, says at the end of verse 33, that as a Christian wife, you need to see to it that you respect your husband. When God created Adam. He placed him in the garden, gave him responsibilities, and he created animals and brought all the animals to Adam to name. Mm -hmm. But God knew this and said to himself that it's not good for man to be alone. He says, so I will make him a helper that is suitable 
for him. And God, therefore, subsequently put Adam to sleep and took one of his ribs from his side and fashioned a woman out of it and brought him to her. And the Bible says that they became husband and wife. One of your roles, Christian wife, is to, in marriage, is to be a helper. And if you want to help your husband and help your husband instead of hindering him, mm -hmm. respect him, mm -hmm. submit to him. Mm -hmm. Well, Pastor, look, listen. I still ain't got I still ain't got past his death. This man is human, and you know, and maybe I will. <laughs> but I, but but he needs to show some. He needs to show some progress and some growth. And I'm just gonna wait. <laughs> let me let me help you. Does Jesus do that with you? Does he? Say, I'm gonna just hold back my grace. I'm gonna hold back my favor. I'm gonna hold back my kindness. I'm gonna hold back my goodwill towards you until. <laughs> you get it together. <laughs> question of that, the answer to that question is, no, he doesn't. He, he lavishes his grace on us, even when we are undeserving, and he showed that in Christ, and in Christ we see that, that God, he didn't wait till we got right in there while we were yet sinners, the Bible says. Christ died for us. He did good towards us. He redeemed us. He gave his life for us. I want to tell you, Christian wife, that, that ought to be your, your, core for, your core motivation as to why you need to go ahead and submit to him even though he ain't all there. And, and just in case you say, well, I, I'm a Christian now, and, but my husband isn't. So I'm not going to submit to him because he's not saved. Well, First Peter instructs you to do otherwise. The Bible says that, that wives, you are to be subject to your own husbands so that even those who disobey the word, that is, even those who are not saved, may be won, not by your words, but by your respectful conduct. So, you, you, you have no excuses. <laughs> your biblical role is to submit to your husband. And, and, and sisters, if you are married, you, your life, being in Christ, infused by the Holy Spirit, and living it according to the word, is very influential that God can use that to draw your husband to Christ, to saving mm -hmm. repent, to saving faith and repentance of sin in Christ. Mm -hmm. And I just want to encourage somebody that partner with God mm -hmm. in trying to win your husband by being submissive to him and being respectful. I don't know if any of y'all have ever watched uh, Little League basketball players or, or kids play basketball. But if, if you've ever watched them, and even in practice, you know, sometimes, you know, the coaches, they're trying to teach them the fundamentals of the game, and they, they bring them out on the court, and they uh, put them in certain positions. What they're trying to teach them is, you know, this, this, is, this is your role that you need to play on this team. This is where I, as your coach, I know where you best will play and will perform. Not because any of y'all are less than the other. This is just the roles that we have lined out, the positions that we have lined out for you. And it's so funny because when they end the game, all that stuff goes out the window. <laughs> right? 
They are, they're, they're running around. Well, the, little, the little man over here, he's supposed to be playing as a center, but he's running the point down the floor, and he got the ball, and he's running, he's running point. Or he's supposed to be on the wing as a shooting guard, and, you know, he's down there, he has a power forward, and he, you know, they just, they, they don't know anybody, but they're all over the place. And when you watch it, I mean, it's cute. And it's, and it's fun, and it's just kind of lighthearted. You know, even though they, they lose the game, it's just fun to watch. <laughs> but one of the reasons why they lose the game is because they don't know how to play their role. <laughs> <laughs> and what I want to tell you is not playing your role might be cute <laughs> on the court, <laughs> but it's not cute to God in marriage. And I want to encourage you to, my sister, yield to your husband. Here's, here's one more for you. Have you ever um, been on the road, on the highway, and you come... <laughs> and you come... <laughs> To an on ramp, mm -hmm. and you're driving, and you have the right of way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but somebody mm -hmm. that is coming from the access road yeah. takes that on ramp and ignores yeah. the yield sign. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> have you seen this? Oh, Some of y'all done this. I've done it too. <laughs> I know you did. And you run past that yield sign, and it causes all kind of havoc. In some cases, it causes wrecks. Mm -hmm. It causes wrecks. In other cases, it just causes unnecessary tension right. and stress and anxiety. Right. Unnecessary swerving and hitting potholes and blowing out <laughs> tires <laughs> and causing chain reactions right. of collisions. Oh. <laughs> I want to tell you that if, that, that if you want by God's grace through his spirit to limit the relational fender benders in your marriage. That you, if you want to limit that unnecessary stress and anxiety and tension, Christian sisters, wives, yield to your husband and get behind him. Follow him. Pray for him. Yes. Encourage him. Yes. And, and ask others to pray and encourage him. Yes. 